Hey everybody, welcome to Maker Monday. It is an exciting day because this is the first of a two-part series and it's our first two-part series. Thrilled to death to have Melody Weintraub with us. Melody is a retired, well-deserved, well-earned um, that title of retired art educator. She's also the president of Tennessee Art Education Association, a wildly talented artist. And um, this is a lesson that she has shared um, at the National Art Education Association conferences. She has shared it virtually um, and in person. And I'm just gonna let her completely take over the stage because we have an hour packed. Don't panic if you don't have the supplies because this is two parts. So you can always go back and watch again. I've included the handout with all the supplies in um, the handouts along with Melanie's bio. So Melanie, Melody, thank you. I'm getting all confused here. Thank you so, so much for being here. And I am so excited to do this right along with you. You are so kind. I am just thrilled. And I am so excited that we have so many joining us today. And I know that people are joining for different reasons. Um, you know, some, some people are joining because you just want to learn how to do it. Um, yep. Other people are joining because um, you uh, have done it before and you want to kind of get some new skills and then some people are just curious so and I know that some of you will be teaching it and some of you will just be doing it and I'm telling you it is so incredibly fun to do um, once you get over the fact that you're actually injuring a book you know it's okay <laughs> and uh, that the, means stuff to some people that's right and I, I love altering books and I never thought I'd say it and the thing that changed my mind about that, in fact, I was once asked to teach it when I taught art ed at the University of Memphis. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I can do that to a book. Because my generation, I grew up, if you even sneezed on a book, then, you know, you could be fined. And plus, it was <laughs> wrong. And so I never, I never underlined in a book. Or if I did I, with a pencil, I just kind of lightly. And so I had to get over that. But when I saw this big pile of books outside the library, that was a, they were about to be discarded. And I'm talking about to the dump discarded. I, I, did, I didn't look at I looked at them differently, you know. And I didn't really look at them as books. I saw them as art supplies. <laughs> oh, yes. And when I saw them as art supplies, I was okay. So we're going to alter some books today. I am new to this webinar stuff, so please be patient. I am now going to go to my, oh, I guess I'm already showing my screen. I'm not even really sure, but um, here I am. Okay, so now what I want to do is to share my screen, and I guess I'm sharing my whole screen right here, right? So I want to take you quickly through some slides, and we may kind of go back and forth. Um, uh, I just want to know, uh, Chris, can you see this now, my slideshow? Okay, so it says showing main screen, so I'm assuming yeah, that... You can see okay, good. Andy, Andy mutes me while you speak so that there's That's no right. distractions so he quick well, turned me back on you're you're looking great we're doing great <laughs> okay so this is a slideshow presentation that i put together for um the uh louisiana art education association i have presented altered books nationally and um to my classroom and also statewide so I just love altering books. This is a wonderful quote. I'm not going to do this all throughout this thing, but you need to see that this is from a therapist who professes the importance of resilience in reparation and recovery engaging in this form of visual journaling. 
turned it turned out to be more powerful than she originally anticipated. All art making is in some way about transformation and renewal. So altered art empowers the creator to restore what has been lost and to make changes to what already exists through symbol and metaphor. So I'm just telling you that that so many people I want to I want to I want to show you a few examples of some altered books. This is my first altered book. It was the story of Anne Frank. I wanted to teach altered books, so I started learning about altered books. I scoured the internet looking for YouTube. I learned a lot from YouTube, different people that posted different things about altering. So this is my book, um, my Anne Frank book. So what I did with this book is I retold the story of the book. Um, I, I had always thought if I ever altered book, I want to alter Anne Frank. And so I have just retold her story throughout the book. And um, you can see several examples. And I have so many stories that I'm not going to share with you, but here you go. Um, this top right, um, the right side of that page is blackout poetry. And it doesn't mean that the page has to be blacked out. It means that other words are hidden so that you can emphasize certain words. And we're going to get to blackout poetry. Also, in the bottom right, you'll also see some blackout poetry, but we'll keep going. Um, here's some example of student work. I knew that I was good when I saw a student bring brand new doll furniture, yes, to the classroom. And I was like, oh, what's she going to do with that? She then asked me for the hammer. Oh yeah. And she started crushing up the doll furniture and distressing it because her altered book was Les Mis retold. How cool is that? So that broken furniture was of course the barricade. Okay. Uh, you've got a list of supplies. I'm going to skip right through this. I don't need to to next we're going to get to prepping the book now this is where we're going to go first and i am going you can see now how we're going to do this i've kind of got several different um, um several different steps but we're going to start right away and i'm going to also come back now i want to stop showing screen and come back to you Let's see, here I am. Hi. And now I am going to hopefully go to my, uh, hang on just a second. I will get to it just a moment. I am looking for my preferences. There I go. And now I'm going to, hang on just a second, just a second, just a second. I am going to go right away to the book. Now, a couple of things. This is my uh, table where we're going to be working. A couple of things that I want you to see is you want to start with a healthy book. You don't want the book to already be falling apart because it won't hold the abuse that you're going to do to this book. Um, also, this book particularly, this one is has a sewn binding right here. That's something else. If you're in a bookstore or you're in a garage sale and you want to look for some books, if they have a sewn binding, they're going to hold up better. So you want to kind of pick through those and get a sewn binding. Um, the other thing that you want to look at is uh, maybe a, the cover of what you're going to do to the cover when you're looking at the book. And usually I want them to be at least an inch and a half to two inches thick. This is a smaller book that we're going to start prepping. And so um, that's all you really need to know. You just grab a book, right? Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, divide up some pages in the back of your book. And you want to make it, this is going to end up being a niche. And I will show you the, the niche that's in the Anne Frank book. Oh, I didn't mean to do the panic button. This is a niche in the Anne Frank book. So these pages have all been glued together, but there's a special way to glue it. So you're making something that's very stable because next week, when we come back, 
we're going to start scoring out these pages. But it's going to take several days, unless you just can't wait and you do it anyway. I know some of you. But anyway, you want to, we're going to make this, this niche prep first before we do anything else in the book. So you're going to need some clamps, any kind of clamps. You can even use clothespins, but you're going to need several. That was in your list of stuff. And you're going to need some glue. Now, you can use Mod Podge if you want to, but I'm probably just going to use glue all, just Elmer's glue for doing this. And um, I put glue in these little caps. So I could do it with this, which I probably should. And so you're going to hold it like this. You are also going to need to grab some wax paper or some deli wrap, which deli wrap is just wax paper works fine, but you're going to want to protect the rest of your pages because this is going to be kind of messy. Now, I usually do not cut the niche all the way to the back. I like to leave this page in case there's something else I want to tell. So you're going to take, yours is going to be about an inch thick. And you're going to take your glue. If you want to use a brush, you may use a brush to put your glue on. So this is just regular glue. And you want to kind of hold it firmly, and you put it just to the outside edge. You want to make sure that you get all the pages covered, but you will never, ever again return to these pages, except when you are when you're, when you're cutting through them later, when we cut out the niche, then you might see some of the images that are in there. But if there was some kind of image that you wanted to save, like a really nice illustration or something, then you probably should have torn that out of the book before you did this. My students at school just absolutely love this unit. And I did this unit, you might want to write this down if you're teaching. I did this unit towards the end of the year, and what I really used it as, as an assessment, <laughs> kind of an assessment of what they had learned when they, and it was for eighth grade, what they had learned in middle school art. So I incorporated painting and collage and printmaking and all these things into the book. And in your handouts, you not only have the, you not only have the um, schedule, you not only have the, the, the criteria, you have a schedule. And I'm telling you, you cannot be in a hurry for this. This might even take all semester long. After you have glued it together really good, you want to clamp it. And I got these clamps at Dollar Tree, by the way. Oh, yes, I did. You know, it's one of, besides NASCO, it's like the best art store. Glad I said besides NASCO. Okay, so now I've got it clamped. So I'm not going to return to this. I am now going to put, actually, I could put it on the front and the back, but I am going to put my wax paper or your deli wrap right here so that you can work through your book and you don't have to worry about getting it on you. You know, our baby baby wipes are handy, these little handy wipes to get glue off your hands and stuff when you're doing a fancy webinar or whatever. You know, I'm just kidding. All right, so now you've got the back part that is glued and you're not going to return to that anymore. Now this book has got to be thinned out because you're going to put so much stuff in it that I'm just telling you, you're going to have to make room, okay? Um, I will show you, I showed you before the Anne Frank book, look what it looks like. And, and if, you know, you might shudder to think if you're a book artist, like I'm just like, I just like to do this. So a really book artist, you would probably not even see any kind of curvy wrinkles in the paper or anything like that. But I was in a hurry to tell this story and get this done. 
And so you can see how much is going to you're going to put in here. You're going to do all kinds of stuff. And so you're going to have to make room because you won't have enough room. Now, uh, we're going to use the method of um, I probably want to save the first, maybe the first three pages. And if you want to save the title page, you can. But then you're going to start flipping two pages and you're going to tear two. But wait a minute, because when you tear, you need to come in from the edge just about a quarter of an inch and you hold your ruler down firmly and you grab one piece of paper at a time and you pull it. So there's, and I always save the pages I tear out. I may need them for something else. So I'm going to tear two. Now I'm going to flip two. So I take my ruler out. One, two. Then I'm going to tear two. Even though this is an adorable okay. illustration. Yes, Melody, it's Chris. So you oh. are supposed to have a little tiny little little tiny yeah. left on your page. I feel like mine might be a little thicker than yours, but I still have no a little teeny yeah. tiny strip. Yeah. Well, it's about a quarter of an inch or a half inch. That Perfect. it needs to okay, be good. Inch. I'm doing it right. You are do you're you're doing great, Chris. <laughs> you're great. Okay, and then I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to, I love this, this little illustration, but, you know, this is going to be a practice book, probably. Yeah, and that's another thing, you know, if you, you could make this your practice book. So, I tore two. Now, I'm going to flip two. One, two, and then I'm going to tear two. One. Oh, somebody dog eared it. Oh, it was love. Okay, two. And then you're going to flip two. Now, if you have a gigantic, enormous book that is this thick, like it's this thick. No, you know, if it's this thick, you could probably tear three. But you want to always flip two. Okay? So, but it's just easier just to remember. Tear two, flip two. Now I'm volunteering. So you go all the way through your book like this. Okay? Now, you got it? That's what you're going to be doing. Okay? So I this is uh, like, you know, cake in the oven time, kind of. I want to make sure that we get through everything that we need to do, and I am going to also let you know this. It was tough for me to do this in two and a half hours, this altered book, to teach it. Um, the best scenario was when I had a two-day workshop for TAEA, two-day workshop, and it was like two and a half or three hours each. Then I felt like we could really make progress and get, you know, a lot done. So we are going to, you know, we're really... Um, <laughs> we're really going to be moving through this. Um, let's tear a few more, and then we're gonna. I'm going to show you about um, pocket pages and about how you're going to glue some of the pages together. Tear two, flip two, flip two. I just want to have enough that I can demonstrate for you. Oh, my goodness. All right. This is something that if we have any snow days, right, this is going to be something that you're really going to enjoy working on. Um, it is a cathartic experience. You kind of really can process a lot of things, not just by tearing out pages, but I'm saying by 
expressing yourself through an altered book. All right, this is a very short book, so I'm getting really close to the end. All right, we've got enough pages now that I can probably show you. I'm going to tear these out later because I want to keep on moving. So um, now what you want to do is you kind of look through your book. And uh, I always ask the students to choose a theme before they do their books. You might already have a theme in mind, or this could be a practice book. This is gold to me. Gold, G-O-L-D. Gold to me. Um, a really wonderful friend, Susan DeGarmo, who lives in Nashville, found out I was doing altered books. She says, you know, I taught altered books for years. And I went, really? And she said, yes, I'm going to send you my teaching book. Oh, my goodness. She sent me a teaching book. Now, it's got all kinds of examples, and they're marked. Is this not beautiful? And I know you would love to look at this whole book and let me flip through it really slowly, but we don't have really time. But it is a wonderful book. But this is a good idea. You can make your book a teaching book if you're a teacher. You can make it your teaching book so that it will be a sample of all the different methods that you want to do. And I have... I promise you, I have copied, I have stolen so many of these ideas. It's just wonderful. So that's a teaching book. All right. Um, we are now going, you want to hey, look Melody, through. Can I quick ask another question? Sure. So um, one of our viewers, Mara, says, can you tear it at random intervals so that um, some of the images are left? N no. <laughs> I You're didn't think so. Well, there, there's a method what, to the madness, isn't there? No, it, this is the, the deal. You can you can do other things. If there is an image, let's just say what we're going to do. Let me just talk ahead a little bit. What we're going to do, but don't do it yet, is wherever there is this, where we tore at the pages, we are going to glue two pages together so that you don't see these. However, let's say I really wanted this image, but I know it's going to be glued together. I can let this be a cut through image. In other words, I am going to cut through this page to see what's on the other side. Now, um, if you randomly go through your book, you're going to have, you might have an issue, it's math, math again, but you might have an issue where, oh dear, I don't have enough pages left, now I'm going to have these two things. You know, I'm going to have I'm going to have this tab here, and you're going to be able to see the tab there, and I don't want to. So you can, but you just kind of need to be, figure it, you'll have to figure out and problem solve when it comes to, uh, putting your images together. I hope that makes sense, Chris. Um, okay. Um, you can continue to tear to, save to later, but some of you are going to be ready now to start gluing. A couple of things I want to say. I, that list of criteria that I gave you that has all the different um, things that your book should have. Pockets, you need to have a collage page, you need to have a side pocket, a top pocket, a half pocket, all of those things. Um, I would probably go through my book and decide where those things are going to be. Now, I might do it before I glue my pages together, and I'll tell you why. Let's say, like Mara said, she wants this image then I need to mark with a pencil, I'm going to put cut three page right here. And I might even, I can write it in pencil, but I can also take a sticky. I don't see my sticky kiss. I, I have the students use post-its and go through the book and mark where their things are going to be. This is going to be a cut three page. I'm going to mark it. So let's say I want to make 
this, or maybe I'll make, I'll make this a pocket page. I'm going to write on it, pocket page. Because it matters how I glue it. So I need to know where these pages are going to be. Um, I want to show you how to glue pages together. Now, you probably don't want to do this until you've planned your book completely out, but you, you can. But it, I would probably wait until you know where your cut three page is and you know where your pocket pages are. Um, my cut through page was here. You've probably already figured this out because you, you teach art or you know art or you love art. But if I want to know where this image is on this side, obviously I can't see through this page. But I could if I put a little flashlight under here. Let me see if I can do this without blinding you. Let's see. All right. So now I can see where the image is on that side. You can use a light board. You can put it in a window. So now I know that I want my cut through right here. And I might even cut through it before I glue the pages together. And if I'm going to cut through it, I would get a piece of map board or I have this cool little piece here. I'm going to get my exacto. I'm going to cut the cut through out. You can do whatever shape. I'm just doing this really quickly. And there's my cut through. So now you can still see him throwing a little fit there. Okay. Um, I want to show you, so I hope, Mara, you understand about that before we start gluing. Um, this is going to be my pocket page, and I'm going to, when I get to that page, I'm going to glue it differently. But to start gluing, I want to go to the back of the book. You want to, excuse me, you want to start from the back and go to the front. For some reason, when you're gluing, it works better and smoother if you work from the back to the front when you're gluing your pages together. So, to glue my pages together, I'm going to take, I actually like to use Elmer's glue for this. I hope we're doing okay here. I'm going to put, this is an old framing trick. If you frame your own artwork, you know about it. Um, you're going to get glue on your finger. I hope that's not bothersome. If it is, oh, I bought these witch fingers at, uh, yeah, I think Walgreens on sale after Halloween one year. And my students, besides them being witch fingers, which they love, which they love, they, you know, you can, they can use something like this so that the glue doesn't get on their actual finger. But I don't mind if it gets on my finger. I'm just showing you that you can do that. So I'm going to go ahead and get it. Okay. So you want to put the glue behind your finger or in front of your finger. And this is going to just be a page that's glued together. This is not a pocket page. I'm going to put glue, and you want to just put a nice line of glue. You don't have to put glue in the middle. You just put it on the edge. And then you take your paper, and you fold it back, and you press it down really good. So now you've glued. That's how you glue your pages together. You need pages glued together because you're going to do things to them that needs to make them a little sturdier. And if the book you selected is a book that has thin pages, um, like a Bible or something, or a hymnal, it might you might want to uh, glue several pages together. Because actually, I probably wouldn't select those. I would probably use them for something. Okay, and then I'm going to glue this one. It's not a pocket page, once again. I'm just going to glue it like this. 
put a fine line of glue. Make sure you get it. You probably want to get it out to the edge, but you don't want your pages sticking together, so be careful. Don't make it kind of ooze. And then you press it down really firmly. All right, so that's how you glue pages together. How are we doing, Chris? We're at 230. I think we're doing okay with me. Are you okay? Yes, we are doing just great, um, minus the small problems I'm having, but that's that's just because I'm everybody's student that will do the wrong thing. When I was cutting out my, my um, see-through, I accidentally cut all the way through. So that was kind of an interesting thing, but I've already made up a way to fix it. So keep, problem keep solving. Solving. Good news, the camera is not on me. Once again, problem solving. And if you cut out something that you wish you wouldn't have cut it out, guess what? You can glue it back in the book. You it's just glue it on one of these pages. Yeah, you just glue it on one of these pages. Okay, I'm going to show you how to make a pocket page. Are you ready? We're going to make a pocket page. There's several different kinds of pocket pages. Notice that I am not going back to my wonderful, wonderful PowerPoint because I think it's better with our limited time if I just show you. There are different kinds of pocket pages. I made, this is my art story. Oh, yes, it is. And it's all about my dad. That's not all about my dad. It's dedicated to him. But it's, it's how I got interested in art. And this is my art journey. He gave me that picture. So there's all kinds of things that we're going to be doing. We'll do pop-ups probably next week, pop-outs and pop-ups. But this is a pocket page. And this is actually uh, when my teaching story, and this is from years of teaching, and this is actually my lesson plan book um, that I, I mean, I glued it on here. But this is an idea of a pocket page. When you think about pockets, you need to think about what am I going to put inside, and what are the contents like, and how are people going to access them. So this is how these are accessed. I put them because it's about my art story. I put art supplies in there, taped Polaroids that I had to the paintbrush and to, and it's not expensive paintbrush, and to the um, thing. But you can see that this page opens this way. It opens on the side. I could make it open on the top, or I could do a half page. I'm not going to search through that book to find you a half page. But I do have a half page in Anne Frank, and it's one that I shared and I showed before, and that is this page. This is actually, I cut the whole page in half to make a pocket. I didn't have to. I could have just had this as part of a page, but I ended up cutting that all the way through. And, of course, I've got pictures of Anne Frank in the pocket there. And then here's one that opens from the side and it's groceries talking about the people that were kind to them, brought them groceries. So I've got actually, I make, put a grocery sack there and I put groceries inside. So there's different ways to do pocket pages. If you're doing a pocket page, let's go ahead and let me show you how to do a pocket page that opens here. You've probably already figured that out. All you do, are you ready? You put a bead of glue at the top. You put a bead of glue at the bottom. Do not put it here. You just put it everywhere that you don't want the page to open, right? So I'm going to open it that way, so I don't want to put glue there. Now, if you want to put it on the top, then you can leave the top where you don't put the glue. But I'm not. I'm putting it here, and then I want to, just like you did your pages, I want to fold it over really good. And now, it may not have to wait overnight, but see how there's a way to get into this through the pocket now. That's a pocket page. Not that hard, I know. Okay, so I'm going to show you a different kind of a half pocket page. Oh, <laughs> this looks so cute. Okay, let's see. Where's my half pocket page? I'll make a half pocket page here. Okay, so this is going to be a half pocket page. Um, you kind of have to pay attention to this a little bit. I, I probably will go ahead and I am going to 
slit my page in half first. I'm not tearing it all the way over. I'm starting about here. And notice that I did put something hard between the pages here. So I am going to cut there. Don't go all the way to the end. So I'm just cutting a little slit right here. Some people said it might be a good idea. This is a very dull exacto, which is the best kind to accidentally cut yourself. All right, that one's better. All right, so, so notice that it's got a little slit here. Now, someone said it might be good to reinforce this with washi tape, and that might be a good idea. You could do that. Um, but now I want to put a bead of glue. So here's my, here's the way it's going to go in. I'm turning it back over. I'm going to put a bead of glue across here. And I'm going to put a bead of glue up this way. And I'm going to put a bead of glue down here and a bead of glue over here. If you want to put it here, too, you can. I don't know that it's necessary, but I will. But don't put it where you're going to have the pocket, right? All right, so now look at this. Now I've glued this together. And now I can access it here and put stuff in here. I can put stuff in the top because I didn't put glue up there. Can't necessarily get my hands on it, but there it is. So now I can put stuff up here, and it will stop because I put that glue right there. You know how I put the glue on the inside right there? So now it'll stop there. So I've got a, a double pocket page. You may have to watch the video over again to see that, but it's not that hard. Okay? And you already figured this out, that this is the cut through page that we made. Now that it's there, I'm going to close this. And, you know, you've worked oh, all the way through gluing your pages. Yes, ma'am? Uh, no, I said, look at that. That is just perfect. So one of the um, questions was, will you get a recording of this so you can watch it again? Absolutely. Um, after the session is over today, in about a, about an hour later, you'll get a follow up email that will not only have um, the recorded session, but it'll have the link to next um, session as well. And one other question is when you're gluing the pages, do you just glue the three sides? You don't go down the center, right? You don't need to. You don't need to. It'll hold. Okay. Okay. Very good. Also, I actually think it's it makes it more flexible, like when you're turning it, if it's not glued inside there. For makes some sense. reason, most of the most of the videos I watched when I learned to do this said you don't have to put it there, but it's preference. You know, you're learning, and maybe you like it glued there, but I don't. I don't glue that inside. Unless the pocket, you know, I made the, when I made the pocket page, I did. Okay. Great. Now, um, I want to talk about, well, I haven't finished gluing all of mine. Uh, but now I kind of want to talk about, um, I always have the students go through their book, and once they know their theme, I ask them to figure out um, a, some words that go with their theme, like to make a list of words. Let's say my, mine is about family. This book would be pretty easy probably to make it about family, I guess. Some of these pages I haven't torn out yet. Um, but let's just say that. And so then you go through the book and find a page that might have some of those words on it. It may not, but this part is called blackout. Now, I also want to show you some examples. My blackout page for Anne Frank. Anne Frank. 
it was in the beginning. It was when they went into hiding. So this is one of my blackout pages. So I went ahead ahead of time. I took a pencil and I circled words that created a thought. Obviously, I made it look like it was a back stairway. And I have arrows that go to the words that I want you to read. You know, it's just like, do it however. It, it's your book. It's your story. However you want to make people read it or see it or however you personally want to make it. So this says there's a tiny passage without a window and a small door leading to our annex. Um, I think you should know my story. So what I did was is I circled all these words. I then took um, black, just black paint, and I, I painted everywhere. I did not want, you know, I didn't want to have the other words. I just painted this. You can do it with gesso. You can use black gesso. You can use white gesso. You can use, if you're going to paint on the actual pages, this is a cut through. Um, but if you're going to paint on actual pages, I would suggest that before you start, that you gesso the page. Now, if you're going to collage on it, you probably don't need to gesso it. You know what gesso is, this stuff? Gesso. You want to just put a thin um, layer of gesso on it to seal the page. If you're going to collage, you don't need to. You can, but you don't need to. And once again, I'd plan out my book before I'd start gessoing, right? Um, okay. There's so many things I'd love to tell you about this book, but I won't. Okay. Now, um, another way, an, another thing that you can do, and you probably, you know, maybe you thought about this. I'm going to show you another example because you may want this for one of your pages. This is my prayer group, prayer book. It is my personal prayer book. I just made it because I wanted to express these things, right? And I love looking at it. Here's a pocket where I have folded the pages backwards into the book, made a triangle, and inside the pocket, I've got my children, my family are all on these little feathers. So their names are on the feathers. So that's one thing I did. Um, we're going to do pop-ups next time. But anyway, this is an interesting thing that you may want to consider doing, and that is a woven page. So. You could even take two of your pages that are glued together and you can glue those together to make a, so these are already glued together. I can decide that I want to make a woven page here. And so later I can even glue these together like that. If there's nothing I want from the inside here. So that makes this really firm. So even if you've glued pages together, you can do this. And to make this, what I did was I simply slit, made slits in the page. Be sure you put something like this underneath it. And I made them all up. And then I wove this together. Then I glued those pages together. Now, in you haven't even seen my book, this one. What time is it? Oh, I'm good. 15 minutes. This book, um, well, it's not really woven, but this is another kind of pocket. I had some pullouts here. But anyway, so then you take your whatever you want to have woven in here, and you just weave it through there. Then, you know, then you're going to glue it together. So you make the slits, you weave it, and then you can glue it together. Okay. You want to weave it first so that you can get to the stuff from the back. Does that make sense? All right. Hope so. Prince, any questions? To make that woven page, you're doing really good. Okay. To make that woven page, I would probably take my ruler, figure out where I want it, you know. And I love these little straight edge. And this one broke, so I kept it from the class. <laughs> Because <laughs> uh, it's just the right size for altered books, right? And then you would just decide where you want to put your slits. 
remember you've got to have book between it you know you can't just do all cut all these slits so that's how you do it you see and then you put your so if y'all want to do that on some of your pages you could but I, I it, to be honest the, the most effect this is so effective because i've collaged these decorative papers on top of it where is it again oh wrong book you know i put these gold pages on it first before and you know that's been already treated so some of you are going to be playing with these anyway and that is there's nothing wrong with that and you can make more than one book so do whatever you want to you know you're going to be inspired you're going to want to start you're going to play with this all week long you won't get any laundry done that is a promise the laundry can wait the altered book comes first right okay anyway all right um what else was i going to show you i was going to show you about blackout so what i would do well, let's just say um i uh, adam had time to you know to play all right and and then i'm going down i'm circling these words so i want to do that ahead of time and then i want to black out the page does that make sense okay we're moving right along we have got it's 246 is there i think oh i want to show you one other thing before we go and that is um you may before we meet back again want to do photo collage somewhere in the book and so i'm going to show you a, a really cool way to do photo collage next week that we learn in one week but if there's something that you want to work on uh if you want to do this other method you're probably going to have to do it before we meet again i i don't know if that made any sense i don't think it did made any sense at all but um, I'm going to show you <laughs> how to uh, do a photo collage. And this book is going to be about art, once again, that I've started. Um, I've got several pages that I've been doing. This is an idea of uh, photo transfer. I said photo collage, but photo transfer. And I did this with regular Mod Podge. Uh, or a gel medium, you can use a gel medium. And I didn't even, I didn't gesso the page first, I just put it right on. And if you can see, you can see the words through the photo collage, which is, I mean, through the um, photo transfer, which is really, really cool. But if you wanna do that, that's something that you're gonna have to do ahead of time before we meet, because it's got to, sit on your page it's got to sit there and i had a page gessoed for this but you don't have to have it gessoed so all right lost the page oh i'm trying 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 hurry 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 don't see it whoops don't see it nope but i'm going to go ahead and just put it on here um so what you do is you put the i'm going to use the gel medium you can use mod podge and there's actually a special mod podge that's made as you know specifically for this but all you do is put you put the gel medium on the right side of the picture make sure you cover it really really good You probably need to do this, just do it, just do one or two, just so you'll have them ready for next week. We're flying, we're flying, Chris. All right, then I'm gonna turn this over and I'm just gonna put it down and I'm gluing it face side down in the book. And then I probably wanna put wax paper there, right? Cause I don't want my pages to stick together. So we'll look at that. I'm going to show you how to transfer, how to take that off next time when we meet. What time is it? 
10 minutes. We're good. That's just to wake you up. Okay. Um, I think you're doing, I, you're doing great. And we, we do have a um, question, couple questions, especially as it applied to the weaving page. Yeah. Um, one of the yeah. questions was you cut it horizontally, correct? I did. Yes. I cut, I did the pages. Did I do it in this book? Which one did I do it in? Oh, and you make one and you make one long slit. Um. Okay, so here's you do you cut it like this. Gotcha. Do you see how I cut it? Yeah. Can you see? Yeah. I cut slits. Yes. You remember, like you take your ruler. Don't do it all the way out to the edge, and don't do it all the way to the inside. You just do it like that. And then the way I did it was I'm over the book here and under the book, under the page here. Over the page here, under the page here. See that? This one, I did the opposite. I went under first, then over, under, over, under, over. And then I went back, over, under, over, under. Perfect. Does that make sense? It does. Is the person satisfied with my answer? Julia, if you are okay with the answer, or if you are if you need more clarification, let us know. I want to also tell you about this. Um, for photo transfer, like what we're gonna do next week, we're gonna do photo transfer. We're going to do, oh, and there's one you're just going to love. I probably could show you now, um, but I want to make sure we have plenty of time. But these National Geographics, I know you're scared because I'm using a 1953 September issue of National Geographic. It's okay because I have so many of them, and I know they're historical, but I'm making art with them because they'll prob them, I'm never going to sell them. And they were all donated. And so the images in National Geographic are very rich. The ink is very rich in color. There's something about National Geographics that transfer so beautifully. Now, you can also transfer um, a laser copy, you know, just a piece of paper on laser copy uh, of any image you want. So some people do that. They scan them, laser copy, and I'm like, no, I want th this is real, you know, I mean, this is like real. And I looked at this. Now it makes me, some of these images, because of the years, I'm thinking some of this might be, I might make a book about cultural appropriation because I can't even believe it. When I look at it, sometimes I just kind of shudder, you know, <laughs> to think of how we weren't sensitive, you know, we weren't sensitive. So um, anyway, that's another story, right? Uh, now you got my heart. Okay. Um, anyway, so are there any other questions about what we've done so far? Let's see. 2.53. I probably have time to show you this one more thing about transferring an image. Should we go for it, Chris? Perfect. All right. Yep. Let's do it. Wait, wait, I'm doing, I just got this stuff. And I can't, it's okay. It's okay. Because you can go back over this and look again and we can get more ideas, right? Yes. You're doing, you're doing great. Lots of questions on, do you supply students their books or do you have them supply it? Um, well, they, when you talk about this virtually, they had to get their own book. But, and that was, that was assigned to them like way early way early they had to get their own book i had you would be surprised because some people have the same thing they don't want to you know books are valuable don't want the book i said well see if you have see if y'all have two of the same no okay so then if worse comes to worse i i would leave a copy at this if you're virtual leave a copy somewhere for them you know to come by and get a book because you don't want you know you don't want this to keep them from from doing this um but you can't alter a book if you don't have a book. And you can buy a book for a dollar at Dollar Tree, and you could buy a book for them, you know. 
I finally said, I, I will drive to your house and bring you a book if you want me to. No, no, no. We found one. We got one. We ordered one. Oh, my goodness. Don't order a book. <laughs> I mean, you know. Anyway. Okay. You know, I'm like, all right. All right. We're going to do this quick. Ready? Oh, this is so much fun. We have five minutes. <sighs> okay. Look at this. I have this, by the way, on my YouTube channel. Just go to Melody Weintraub's online art classes. Please go to that one. I have two YouTube channels. One of them I'm going to make disappear one day. But my second one, Melody Weintraub's online art classes, you need to go to that. This demonstration is on there. But I'm going to show it to you anyway because it's fun. It's a good way to end the day. Okay. So you take, I want this cute little bird for something. I don't know where I want this cute little bird, but I know I want this cute little bird. Can you see him pretty good? Okay. So I'm going to take, this is just packaging tape. Taking packaging tape. And I'm going to put it over the little bird. Now, I, I put it that way on purpose so you could see this. If you have to use more than one piece, you have to overlap the pieces. Got it? This is so much fun. All right. I don't know how much of this bird I want to use. I just love this little bluebird. I wrote a book called The Little Bluebird. That's the only book which I highly would ask you, please, please don't alter right away or while I'm living. But um, I wrote a book called The Little Bluebird. So I love bluebirds. I wrote and illustrated. It tells the story of a little bluebird that's born physically challenged. The only place you can get it is in, it's out of print. So I've used Amazon and I don't get any money for it anymore so go get a copy if you want to look at it anyway okay so here you go um you put the glue you want to be sure that you've got it down there really snug ah, i'm going fast and then you turn it over and guess what you do now chris you take a spray bottle of just water you wet it really good rub it in there really good Da, 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 da. Now, the image is going to stick to the tape. Now, I'm going to just start, once it's soaked pretty good, I am going to start peeling it off. You might have to rub it a little bit. I'm going to start peeling it off. And I did this. Uh, my I did this with my grandson who lives across the big pond over in Europe, and we did it. He loved it. So it's something that's easy to teach online. We did this photo transfer, and you can see it. See the bird? Oh, that was just a magazine that you did that with. Yep, National Geographic. But you could do it with any. I've done it with other magazines. Ta-da! Now, once you get through it this much, it may just be because it's National Geographic, but it's kind of gummy, like there's this slime on it. So I just take uh, a baby wipe, once again, yay baby wipes, and I wipe it. Look at this. Isn't this fun? <gasps> wow. Okay. And then it also makes it transparent. Can you see that? Cool. So that's your little treat for the day. 10.58. Any other questions for today? You know your assignment, right? You did fantastic. So on that assignment, was that also a magazine that you took and you Mod Podge the, the front of it and then you just um, laid it on your page? One more time. Question again? Okay, so so the assignment was when you you took you took a magazine picture and uh -huh. you you put the either the gel medium over it or the Mod Podge over it and then right. you put it upside down almost yep. like backwards, right? So what's gonna happen, which you've probably already figured out, what's gonna happen is I've done it on, this is one of the example, this is not finished, but what happens is the image, now the image, I will say this, the image is reversed. 
like this. So if there's any kind of writing, it's going to be backwards. So what I did for this is I went on this website. You can go to public domain pictures. I think it's the Library of Congress. I'm not sure, but it's public domain pictures. You can Google in whatever you want. They're free to use. And then you want to put them on. If you're going to do the if you're going to do the gel medium, you're and they say something like this, right? This has words. Then you want to put them into Photoshop or some program and flip the image so that it's flipped horizontally and the words are backwards. Then you're going to glue it on the page. Does that make sense? And I can't. And I'm going to let this dry. But when it dries, I'm going to wet it like this, and I'm going to rub. So, so very similar to what you did with the duct tape or the duct tape. The tape. Exactly. The duct tape. Yeah. A few yeah. people want to know if you are willing to share your PowerPoint. Oh, um, probably. I'll have to look at it, but I, you know, I think I shared it before. So, and you and I, and you and I can work on that for next week. Yeah, um, well, I'm going to make. Yeah, I want to make as much as I can available. So I guess I can stop sharing now, right? Um, sure. We well, we we would love to end by seeing your face. I can't believe is, how fast that went. I'm just telling you that this will be something that you'll want to just kind of just entrench yourself in. It is, it is so much fun to do this and there are so many methods and i'm sure that most of the people watching are gonna already be on youtube going okay where can i find this and that um well yeah. and i anyway. will say that on melody's youtube channel um she has a video that gives other resources um and other people's altered books um videos so there's just a plethora of resources there she's continuing to build that and she will be back next week. So, That's right. Um, I'm excited for part two. This is fun. I've had nothing but fun gluing mine. It's kind of a hot mess, so we won't talk too much about that. <laughs> but thank you very much, Melody. Thank you. Um, we will Bye. see you next Monday. Everybody have a very happy Thanksgiving. Yes. Um, keep staying safe. Um, be happy and keep teaching art.